Good day there. Today, I want to talk to you about hand rearing baby birds. I'm Tony Gestier, bird vet and director of Veta Farm Australia. I've been making and using hand rearing formulas for over 25 years. For a bird keeper, to be able to hand rear baby birds is a great privilege and a joy, but it is not without its frustrations and tears. Let's see if we can give you a few hints that will help smooth the way to successfully rearing those little guys who are so important to us. For today's demo, I will assume you have a suitable brooder and a preferred method of feeding. In all the years I've been in private avian practice, the single biggest cause of distress for hand reared baby birds of any species is incorrectly mixed formulas. How could this be so, you might ask? It should be simple. Yes, it should be simple. But mistakes can often cause the ultimate demise of the baby. So let's keep it easy. Let's start from the basics and mix up a batch of formula. Firstly, get all the things together you're going to need. Formula, measuring spoon, bowls, hot water, mixing fork, feeding tools, and of course, the baby. It's up to you which formula you use. Obviously, I use the Vetafarm product. That's the one I formulated, that is the one my company produces, and that is the one I stand behind. But there are many other good products on the market. Your choice. Okay, you have a bag of Neocare, you have your baby that needs feeding, and you have all your gear ready to go. Now, take a scoop of the Neocare into your bowl. Add one scoopful of very hot water. Just off the boil is best. Now, take your trusty mixing fork, and I mean fork not a spoon. Big note to self, only mix formula with a fork. A bit of vigorous mixing, we'll work it into a paste. Keep working it until it's smooth. Just a little mini tip here. Mix that way around so that you force the formula down through the prongs of the fork. Gets the lumps out more quickly. Once you've got it to a smooth paste, now add a further three scoopfuls of cool water. Not cold, just cool. Out of the tap is okay. So three small scoops. Now, just with this scoop, just by way of explanation, the big end is 20 mils, the little end is five mils. Hence, we're using one to three quarters in terms of hot water to cold water, okay? Again, more mixing. You need to give it some time for the formula to take up the water. It's important not to feed the formula until it is stable. That means until it's stopped absorbing water. Keep mixing, it'll keep absorbing water. Take your time. It might take you one or two minutes of mixing. Now this batch that I'm mixing up here will give us about, give or take, 40 mils of usable formula. Okay, so keep mixing until it falls through the prongs of the fork. There it is, that's it. I can't stress enough that this is one of the simple mistakes that I mentioned before that people make that creates problems. Don't feed until the formula has stopped absorbing water. Because if it hasn't absor stopped absorbing water, then it will be too dry. And the dry feed will cause crop dehydration and crop stasis. When you have it like this, you can feed with confidence. Get this step wrong and you'll find yourself in serious trouble. Really important. Next, we need to make sure that the temperature is correct. The right range for the temperature for most birds is 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. 
Formula that is too cold will stop the gut emptying, and formula that is too hot might burn the crop. It needs to be right. Another note to self, do not, do not use a microwave to heat baby formulas. They are notorious for creating hot spots within the food and they, the hot spots, may burn the crop. Use either a little more hot water or a little more cold water, put it in a dish and stand it until the temperature is right. I would strongly recommend a thermometer to test temperature. Tongues and wrists are notoriously fallible. You don't get it right. Once you have the formula mixed and you have the temperature in our 36 to 38 degree range, then we're ready to go. Once you have the formula mixed and at the correct temperature, feed it. Don't muck about. Take your spoon, syringe or crop needle, whatever it is, and get on with it. I normally use a crop needle. It's quick, clean and neat. But you need to know what you're doing if you're going to use one. It's not a technique for everyone. Here we have the baby. We have some mixed food. We have our feeding equipment of choice. Away we go. Next time, we'll be looking in more detail at choosing the feeding equipment that suits you. Until then, good luck and have some fun hand feeding those babies.